Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody feeling today? Good. Good? Love this weather. I know, right? It's going to stay like this. Yeah. Weather's going to be good. Nothing bad is ever going to happen in our lives. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's the world. Um, welcome to worship. Anybody viewing online, welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Worship today. My name is Pastor Eric Hansen. Laura? Laura, can you say hi to the people? Good morning, everybody. Eve is in the back, and Debbie is tickling the ivories for us today. Um, announcements today at 11 o'clock here, either overflow downstairs or up here in the sanctuary, we have our congregational meeting for the one giant agenda item of do we sell the parsonage and put all the proceeds towards the forwarded faith fund. If you are not able to make it on site, there's the Zoom link that was emailed out. If you did not get that, let me know soon so I can find out a way to get it to you, but it should have been emailed out to you. It's also World Hunger Month, so in your bulletins you'll notice little envelopes for Lutheran World Relief, and you can send monetary donations to help alleviate world hunger this month on behalf of St. Luke's as well. Worship, the worship life of St. Luke's is changing again. Uh, the cold weather will push us off the football field for next Sunday. So next Sunday, traditional service starts at 8.30 a.m. right here. What time does traditional service start? 8.30 a.m. Awesome, 8.30 a.m. I have to remember that too. <laughs> the second service, the contemporary starts at 9.45 a.m., not at the football field. We will be at the Lions Community Center parking lot for a drive-in service. It will be broadcasted over an FM radio station, which we will let everybody know which station that is. Please don't listen to rock and roll while the service is going. That would just be insulting, and we don't need that. Um, there will be entrances where you can get communion, the little communion packages, as well as bulletins. Um, we'll provide the bulletin that you can print before you come. And I, I would suggest that as it will make people enter, enter it easier if you have a printer. At home, there will be a small mini Sunday school as part of the service where the uh, kids' sermon usually goes. And those are all the details that you need to know orally. None of that's written in the bulletin because it was all decided after the announcements came out, but we'll email and Facebook all that information out this week as well. Um, finally, upcoming November 18th is the Dinner on Us Thanksgiving meal where a group from St. Luke's is going to make, well, a different group is making it per COVID regulations, but we're going to provide a community meal for anybody who wants to drive by and get a Thanksgiving plate. If that's you, awesome. Come by. If you know somebody in the community who would like to hear about this, please let them know. That is enough announcements. Let's get ready to worship. Let's be together in prayer. The Lord be with you. Awesome. Yeah, Father, we thank you for this, this week of, of beautiful weather, an island of, of peace and joy in what has been a sea of cool weather of late. Lord, bring the same peace and joy into our hearts today for ourselves, but not just for ourselves, that we might have something to share for those we meet on Monday. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. 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 gives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 
God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are captive, captive to sin, sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, deed by, by what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Our God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. You may be saved. Thank <laughs> you.
Let us pray together. O God of justice and love, you illumine our ways through life with your words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The epistle lesson is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Praise you, O Christ. Please stand. Gospel reading according to Matthew, verse chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Thank you. I always miss that part. <laughs> See, still new. Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Thank you. You all may be seated. I don't know if you have any kids watching online today. I hope so. I brought a bag full of stuff with me. If you're at home, you can get your school bags. If you're like my kids, they're still full of everything that you brought home on, on Friday. So, the gospel lesson today seems to be all about preparation. How do we prepare to meet Jesus so when he comes, we're standing there ready to go? So I thought, kids, you prepare for stuff every day by going to school because you shove stuff in your backpacks, right? So let's talk a little bit about preparation. If I were you going to school, a good few school, if I were a wildcat, my kids are, so I see what they bring. I notice every week they have to bring one of these, right? Not a coffee cup. This is all I have. A water bottle. Okay? Because you can't use the drinking fountain. So if you don't prepare with your water bottle, you have a very thirsty day ahead of you. Also, if you are like my family and you don't prepare with one of these, this is a mask, you've got to make it, you make it halfway to school and you're like, I don't have my mask. You've got to turn around, go back home, get your mask and keep going. So you prepare by making sure you have your mask with you. All 
of you should have a book, or two, or three, because it's school. So you prepare by bringing your homework and the things that you're reading. And, once again, if you're like my kids, you got a little snack tucked away that your mom or dad gave you to make sure you make it through the day. So you have all these things to get ready for, to get ready for school. What we'll see today, preparing for Jesus isn't always like preparing for things like school or other activities or other events that we like to be a part of. In preparing for Jesus, we oftentimes we find we don't have enough stuff in our backpack, right? So even for folks here, when I'm about to meet Jesus, whether in prayer or in worship or in service to others or in relationship with somebody else, I find that I'm lacking things more than I have things in my backpack. I'm lacking patience, or I'm lacking grace, or I'm lacking forgiveness, or I'm lacking all these things. And so I prepare best for Jesus by telling Jesus what I need from him, when I'm lacking more than showing him what I don't have, what I do have. And that's how preparing for Jesus is a little bit different. So I want you to think of that when you put your school stuff in your backpacks. The way you prepare for Jesus is a little bit different than the way we prepare for everything else. Oftentimes, we need to tell Jesus what we don't have rather than show him what we do have. Should we pray? If you're at home, hold your hands out. People here, I'm going to make you do this with me. Hold your hands out. Let us pray. Father, help us to approach you not so much showing you all the cool things that we have, but showing you more what we need. Patient hearts, forgiving hearts, willingness to open ourselves up to all the good and even all the bad inside. All these things that make us really, really ready, prepared to, prepared to meet you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So how do we prepare for Jesus? Today's Sunday has, Debbie and I were speaking, has a a real Advent kind of feel to it because we're talking about preparation for Christ and how we meet Christ well when he comes. There's there's ten bridesmaids. You can consider it, I like to consider it, two different teams. Five bridesmaids who have enough equipment with them, right? They have enough oil in their lamps and they're ready to meet the bridegroom who's who's supposed to be an allegory for Jesus. And we have five bridesmaids who don't have the right equipment. They don't have enough oil in their laps. And at the end of it, we're left with this question. How do we prepare correctly to meet Jesus when he comes? Now, different scholars will take a look at this and they'll ask, is, is, is Jesus talking about the second coming? Is Jesus talking about how we prepare to meet him here and now? To that question, I always think, does it matter? Would we prepare differently to meet Christ in the second coming than we would to meet him now in worship, in fellowship, in service? Does it truly matter? Either way, we have to prepare to meet Christ. I brought show and tell for the adults today, too. So, I thought what I'd do today is I'd start out by talking about preparation by sharing with you ways I prepare for things. And there's nothing more important to me than preparing well for a fishing trip. Any fisher folk in the crowd? All the hunters are gone. They're all hunting this week. But I think this is important because how we prepare for other things that we approach that we think important in our lives might give us some insight into how we might think about preparing for Jesus. And so I brought all this equipment today because when I prepare to go fishing, I like to arm myself, right, for any and every situation that you might encounter. Catching big fish is really hard. And to do so, you need to have all the right stuff just in case you encounter a situation that's unique. So, one example. For sunny days, if I'm going first, I wonder what the light is going to be like. Is it going to be a bright day or is it going to be a dark, cloudy day? If it's a dark, cloudy day, I like to have lures that look like this with me. Can you see the flash of that a little bit? I don't know if you can see that online. It's a gold and silver spoon, and those colors, gold and silver, are made to really grab the light 
on a dark day so that the fish can still see it swimming in the water even though there's not enough light and ideally they'll eat it. But oftentimes if there's clouds, the clouds will break and you have to be also prepared for a bright sunny day. And so I've got these lures that, that have just a little silver but also are painted, maybe pink or purple. And they don't grab the light as well because on a sunny day, well, let me ask you this. If I were to point a floodlight in your direction, would you come towards me or would you run away? I think you'd probably run away. On a really bright sunny day, you don't want to reflect that much light. You want more something more subtle. So I bring all of these. And I've got something for any and every situation of light. I'm down the spectrum. I also tend to bring more than, more than one rod with me. I bring a fly rod for fly fishing, because sometimes you need a really subtle, small presentation. I like to trout fish, so bring this for subtle, small presentations. Or I bring a spinning rod, which is in a fly rod case, but this is a spinning rod for big lures. Because you never know. Are they going to be actively feeding on foraging fish that look for something like a big lure, which you throw in this? Or do you need something small, like to throw a mosquito or a mayfly or a caddisfly? Some kind of rod like this. So I prepare for those situations like that. I bring hundreds of flies. Hundreds of flies. You never know if they're going to be feeding on the surface below the surface, between the surface and the bottom. What kind of, so you just bring everything. Is that how you would prepare for something important? Make sure you have all the right gear, all the right, right equipment, that you're ready to meet any and every situation that your preparation might throw at you. Now, I brought all this equipment because that's how we tend to think of, of preparation. And in reading the parable of the five bridesmaids, we find out that they didn't have the right equipment. They weren't prepared with the right amount of oil to meet the bridegroom. And our minds immediately go to then, okay, how do I make sure my oil lamp, all the equipment that I have, is enough so when Jesus is here, I'm not found wanting. And sometimes we think that the equipment that we need is, is moral equipment, right? We have this, this idea that what Jesus really wants to see from us are the lifetime works of our hands, our, our, our good deeds. Have we given away enough money? Have we volunteered enough with our church or in the community? Can we show that we've been good husbands and wives and workers and we think our equipment is, is moral and the oil in our lens is that big that he wants to see he wants to see that. Sometimes we have this feeling that the equipment that we bring isn't just our moral equipment, it's also our belief system. Can we show Jesus that we believe all the right things about him? And those things, of course, are found in our creed. Can we honestly say, I believe that he's the only son of God, that he died on the cross? And on the third day, he rose again. And if I can say all those things, my oil lamp is filled, and I have the right equipment to meet him when he comes. To that, I'm always reminded of the second chapter of James. Do you know what, what James says to his people in his book? His people had all of the right belief system, the belief equipment. But the thing that they forgot was loving their neighbor. And James reminds them, that even the devil believes all those cool things about Jesus, but he shudders because he knows all the right facts, but he has none of the right expression of that faith in his life. And so, and so James reminds us, whatever the right equipment is, it's more than just knowing all the right facts about Jesus. The problem runs in, of course, with us, as well as the bridegrooms, what happens when what we bring is not enough? Do we think we will all run into that situation when what we bring will not be enough? Does anybody here know the story of Bill Buckner? Bill Buckner? Oh, this is amazing. 
I've asked a few people this this week, and nobody knows the story of, of Bill Bucket. I will share this story. This is a great story about not having enough. Bill Buckner was the 1986 first baseman for the Boston Red Sox. You don't need to know about baseball to, know to, to, to catch the meaning of this story. Bill Buckner was an amazing baseball player. He had a 20-year major league career. Does anybody know the average major league baseball career? It's five and a half years, so 20 years is pretty amazing. Bill Buckner was the 1981 National League batting champion, which is very amazing. The 1980 National League All Star, 1980 National League All Star. In his career, he hit 2,715 hits, which means nothing until you know that if you hit 3,000 hits in a career, you're more than likely to be a Hall of Famer. So Bill Buckner was a borderline Hall of Famer. Do you think anybody remembers all those things about Bill Buckner? They don't. Want to know why? The one thing. Bill Buckner is remembered for was the 1986 World Series against the Mets. This is the first time the Boston Red Sox had gotten to the World Series since 19... Wait. Yep, 1919. And it's the bottom of the 10th inning. And the Red Sox are up five runs to three runs. They have two outs. They need one out to be the champions of the 1986 World Series. But then the Mets, their opponents start to rally. They get a few hits, they get some runners on base, and they score two runs, so they tie the game. They tie the game, and they also have runners in the scoring position. Boston now needs one out to take the game to the 11th inning and have a shot at winning the World Series. And this batter named Mookie Wilson comes up to bat, and he hits, hits the ball, and it's this dribbling ground ball to first base, the kind of ball that your seven-year-old could catch if you throw it to him in the living room, okay? Just, all he's got to do is pick it up, touch first base, and they go into another extra inning. Instead, the ball comes towards Bill Barker. He reaches down, he has bad legs, bad knees at this point in his career, and he can't get all the way down. And the ball goes right through his legs. A run scores, and the New York Mets become the champions of the 1986 World Series. To any baseball player, if you mention Bill Buckner's name, they're not going to remember the 1981 All-Star. They're not going to remember the 1980 NL Batting Championship. They're going to remember that he missed one ground ball to lose the 1986 World Series. I don't care if we prepared 99.9% .9 of our lives to meet Jesus when he comes. If our oil is filled to that brim, we are going to run into a situation where we are absolutely not prepared. For what we have within us is simply not enough. And this parable today asks what then? What do we do then? Let me offer this for, for reflection. I was thinking this last week about what kind of things Christians do to prepare ourselves for Christ. And if you think about the words we use and the activities that we do, you'll realize it has to do less with arming ourselves, equipping ourselves, making sure we have enough stuff and enough gear with us. It has more to do with disarming ourselves, dropping things. So that Jesus can know the real us. One of the ways we prepare for Christ happened at the very beginning of our worship service. What do we do? How do we worship services start? We did confession, right? What is confession if not a disarming of ourselves, dropping pretense, dropping any sort of perfectionism we might bring to show Jesus for others? But literally, getting rid of things in order to prepare to see Christ. Christians have this word we call repentance. To really repent well, to say to somebody, I'm sorry, we have to drop pride. We don't pick things up, we drop things. And we walk to our neighbor and we say, I'm, I'm sorry. Christians also have, have this word prayer we use to prepare ourselves. 
Have you ever tried to, to pray and not be your authentic self at the same time? Have you ever tried to pray like, like the Pharisee does in Luke chapter 19 when he's in the temple and he says to God, Lord God, I thank you I'm not like this man next to me, this tax collector, a sinner. And then the tax collector says, Lord God, help me, I am a sinner. And Jesus said, which one said the right prayer? It's the one who just came before God as his authentic self, dropping any sort of pretense. Preparing for Christ is not about what we grab and take with us. It's more about what we're willing to lose and drop so we can see the grace and the mercy and forgiveness that he's brought. And that's counterintuitive when we think of preparation. We think it's about what we do to build ourselves up. Preparing for Christ is taking down walls. So he can come to us and we can be authentic in front of him. A final lesson to take from the bridesmaids. In the story of the bridesmaids, look what happens that makes them not meet the bridegroom. Notice it's not about whether they have enough oil. The bridegroom's coming. They see they don't have enough, and what do they do? They leave. They go to get more. They, they, they think they need all this stuff to be ready for when he comes. And when he comes, they're just not there. Meeting Christ is not about all the awesome things we hold for him to see and love us when he gets there. It's about showing him our authentic selves. In confession, in prayer, in repentance, dropping any pretense any inauthenticity, allowing him to meet us as we are, and moving forward with him from there. Amen. And if you have a chance today, go home and Google the YouTube video, Bill Buckner, 1986 World Series. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we come before you today as people who would like to show and bring our best selves, as we do every time we walk out of our Lord, help us to be wary of that temptation, to examine it, to instead of showing you our best selves, help us to show you our most authentic selves. Help us, Lord, through confession, through repentance, through prayer, through worship, to be true in front of you. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in our Lord, who does long to see our authentic selves. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Hear mercy, mercy and grace. grace. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world that you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, art, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creations. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. <clears throat> Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially Keith, Ava, Jim, Brad, Zach, Naomi, Natalie, Donald, Nancy and Don, Dean, Marlene and Lloyd, Finley, Lauren, Hunter, Vera, Cassidy, Chip, and Carl Thompson. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives, and inspire us to use them for building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior, until that day when we gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 Today, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also you. Share a long distance greeting of peace with somebody in the pews. You can do a high five, air five, a blessing, blow a kiss. I could get awkward. Peace. Peace. Peace out. Peace. <laughs> I thank you for, for those who have uh, brought offering to our church and continue to support the good ministries of St. Luke's Lutheran. If you are online, Offerings can be made at www.stlukegoodhue.org on our website or on our Facebook page. Thank you for your good gifts.
We bring nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. Accept the gifts that you have first given us, which we bring to your table, and with them the offering of our lives. Nourish us now with the life that really is life, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It's indeed our right, our joy, and our duty today that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite everybody to take their wafer. At home, if you have bread or wine, feel free to use what you have prepared. And hear the words of promise. This is the body of Christ broken for you. I invite everybody to also take the wine. And hear also these words of promise. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let's pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we have received, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand and receive today's blessing. Today and for the entire week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Christ raised up for the world and go in peace and share the good news. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen.